three days on the trot when we were getting in, introduced to um, schools and uh, we're just sitting there and we was driving on the way to a school and we were looking through a wildlife handbook and it was my own fault, I found the song. <laughs> and you know, you think, oh it's fun, it's fun, you know, and you're like, look, 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 it's in the tune of, um, you know, when the saints go marching in, everyone's like, oh, I'll teach us it, we'll sing it to the kids. So we say, all right, so we learned it and we went into the first, um, first school. And then, you know, we spoke about the importance of preserving the wildlife, blah, 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 blah. Your wildlife club, we're going to teach you the wildlife song. Um, we are the wild, oh yes we are. We are the wild, oh yes we are. We are the wildlife clubs of Ghana. We promise to save our wildlife. Three days later, we are the wild, oh yes we are. Pass the parcel in Ghana takes on a completely different set of rules. Here it's quite civilised, you pass the parcel, you stop when the music stops and you open it up. In Ghana it's slightly different, when the music stops the kids beat each other up and they, uh, they dive for the, for the gifts, they don't care how many layers they tear off and if someone gets smacked or strangled or scratched in the process, so be it. Um, I wouldn't say there's one winner in the end. South African hide and seek is uh, very different from English hide and seek. Um, it took me uh, one or two goes to work this out. So the main difference is that in South African hide and seek, you go out and hide, just as normal, but then you have to come back and tag the place where the person was counting from, the seeker was counting from, and say free. Because you know, the seeker has to do the opposite, has to say caught and tag them. But no, it was a lot of fun, but it's very different, very, very hectic, because you get like a whole load of kids running at you, and you have to work out how many you can catch in one go. Everyone's doing their spoon race, and I had things like um, guess how many bottle caps are in this <laughs> job. That was my job. And so, um, <laughs> and so everyone's doing all these things, and you hear, but I couldn't see for the like 40,000 kids that were in front of my table. You were like, excuse me, can you tell them? Tell them to move, I can't <laughs> see. Just seeing everybody like, well, because we went at night once, and just seeing everybody lying in the tent, like literally side by side, and we had like a thousand people just on the floor in the mm. tent. I've got a low point which is was leaving um, the village at night, that night, the last night of Friday um, and we were all standing outside and Prinsla, who's the next door neighbour and Grandma, she lives next door as well, um, they were at, they, in Genevieve, they had got up and waited for us, so was, we left at 2 in the morning and uh, Grandma was dead upset and so was Prinsla and uh, Genevieve and we were all crying, and I, I was crying for about um, an hour and a half after it, still, because it was just the saddest, that was the worst experience, that was the worst thing about the whole trip, was leaving the village. I'll never <laughs> forget that, I'll never forget that, no matter how hard I try. <laughs>